Ah, now, don't worry. Don't worry. You're on part 23, YouTube. I know this looks exactly like it did at the start of part 22, and you may be asking yourself, what? Did the same video just play again? <sighs> okay. Uh, n welcome in, okay? I get it. I said we were going to just enjoy the sky last time. We didn't. Do I want to say that again? Yeah, I do. Am I worried that I potentially have lied to you again if I say that? Yeah, kind of. Right? You ever experienced deja vu? You ever experienced deja vu? You ever experienced deja vu? Well, here we are. All right. Thanks for taking the time to make it through part 22 where we went back into the Forsaken Underground. And now here we are, topside ready for 23. I appreciate so much that you take the time to watch these videos. As always, leave a thumbs up on this uh, by hitting like. <coughs> Comment down below. Follow me on all the links in the description, including Discord, where I make go live announcements. And let's have fun tonight. And just remember, please don't spoil in the comments. If you do that, you are disliked. No matter how much money you pay me. All right. Let's rock it. Here we go. Where are we going? Let's check the book. You ever experienced deja vu? Good. Good. Okay. So, Mage's Collective. I don't really care. Uh, we can't do the Hala thing, so that's fine. Urn of Sacred Ashes is in Denerim, so that's where we're supposedly headed next. Uh, we gotta go to Denerim for this guy. Grease the wheels. Deliver notices of appreciation of five hooded couriers in Denerim. Seems to me... And we have a lot of shit to do in Denerim, so... Let's go! You hear about those hunters from Oswin? The region strung them up like foxes. He didn't. He did, and he's proud of it too. Says that the other Banorn are gonna get the same. I can't believe that. That's not right. So? What is your uncle? By the way, I'm not generally an advocate for eavesdropping, but you know, gotta. Wait, did somebody actually try to bribe you into reading spoilers? No, but sometimes people feel a sense of entitlement for streamers if they've spent a lot of money on a streamer that they are just immune from being banned or bonked for spoiling stuff. So I just like to throw that in from time to time. Like, but I'm a member of your channel. Like, I appreciate you being a member of the channel, but it doesn't give you a right to spoil my shit. What's up, Puentes? Okay. Uh, yeah. To Denerim, huh? Got a long-ass journey ahead. Let's go. Back home. awake did you did you feel it too it was like the archdemon saw us saw us what does that mean i think wait did you hear that what does it mean alistair you've been a gray warden for years i just started why are you asking me what does it mean i don't know you know better than i do brother i just i just have the dreams I, you know. Well, camp will never be the same, apparently. I guess it's like Duncan once said. We can sense them, and they can sense us. We'd best be more careful from now on. This camp isn't safe any longer. Huh. What will they send next? Darkspawn tax collectors? Fortifications <laughs> will be built around the camp. Yeah, I can't get a bloody night's rest. How unnerving. What, no trap? No ambush? Huh. Some assassins. It is done. Let us move on. Oh, he's been a great Morden for six months. Still longer than me, man. And he was all buddy-buddy with 
with our boy Duncan. So I figure oh, it's just funny that he's asking me that. I'm as green as they come with this. All right, guess we're packing up camp. <clears throat> Ogren, why don't you go ahead and stay watch, all right? I want you to stay here. Uh, I want you to make sure you don't leave until you've eaten the entire wheel of cheese. Don't worry, I'll send you a letter of our whereabouts, all right? Just want you to hold it down, fortify a little bit. Don't let me get in the way of your dinner. And uh, the rest of us are just, we're gonna go have a little talk here. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll, 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 we'll get you in the mail, buddy. <clears throat> Maybe I should talk to these folks and see what they think about what just happened. Yes. Oh, I guess we're just, As you wish. guess we're just back to normal. We're not gonna talk about that. What do you need? I had another dream about the Archdemon. You remember that? It happened like five seconds ago. Yes, me too. And I got the feeling at the end there that it saw us, was aware of us, whatever you want to call it. Could have just been my imagination, I suppose. What do you think? Well, it certainly is your imagination because you had a dream, I guess. Uh, but your... When you have dreams, friends, a lot of people like to ask themselves, what do my dreams mean? Truth of the matter is we have very little concrete understanding of dreams we know they happen we know that basically everybody has them some people don't remember them some people do you can learn to remember them more effectively dreams are one of the great vague things that so many humans experience that we don't fully really fully understand and a lot of people like to know well, what does it mean what's important why am i having this dream that doesn't matter much what matters is the meaning that you make out of your dreams because that's where you're actually engaging your consciousness and you are trying to put things together so i am more interested often as a therapist in people's own interpretations of their dreams because that's going to give us a lot more insight into what's going on for them because they're projecting essentially into their dreams as opposed to me interpreting it for them so Alistair in this instance saw what we saw with the Archdemon as far as we know and his perception of it was that the Archdemon knows where we are. Whether that is true or not, what that tells me is that Alistair is afraid that the Archdemon might know where we are and it has put him on higher alert. That is the much more useful information for us to work with here than whether that actually happened or not. So we can work with Alistair to figure out how to manage that fear and maybe make some decisions based off of it. Um, let's see. Uh, I think you're... Uh, he's probably right, though. But I think we'll just say we need to be extra careful. Because that's something operational... And it's not going to necessarily indulge the fact that, like, his dream was either right or wrong. So we're just, yeah, we need to be extra careful, man. I share that fear. I thought we were already being extra careful. Does that mean we have to be extra, extra careful now? Great. And there I was, enjoying my nap. I guess one thing is certain, at least, isn't it? It's official. This is a blight. Oh. Oh. Whew. You know, been teetering on whether that was true or not, Alistair. You know, thank God we have some clarity around that. <laughs> what do you need? What do you wish of me? How you doing, buddy? Hey, go lick the blood off of everybody. Can you do something about this gory mess? Hell yeah. Hmm. Thanks, pal. Dirk relieves himself on an inconspicuous area nearby. Is it the campfire? Good boy. Way to pee on the fire and try to help us out, big guy. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Ogren don't really care what you have to say. It speaks. Ooh. Okay. Seems like everybody else is Something fine. Something I can help with? Let's get out of here. I guess we're not ever coming back here. Where's my merchant guys? Oh no, were they all slaughtered? They all hightail it out of here?
I wouldn't blame them if they did. They're like, peace, man. We're out. Oh, I can level up. Uh... Let's go. What do I need in order to do this? So, oh, I need dexterity. That's right. So, dexterity. Cool. Shield master. Hell yeah. Uh, I never played those games, Grim Reaper, so I have no idea. Like literally, I've none of the games that you've played, I've uh, that you mentioned, I've not played any of them, so I don't know. All right, gather your party and venture forth. Yes, to Denerim, we go. Look, everybody's still splashed with blood. Love that. Now we walk. I thought it was pretty obvious I wanted to go to Denerim. Oh, good. Will you stop eating? Listen, rush them and spring your own ambush for a change. Leave and skillfully evade their clueless trap. Let's listen. Because I know I can fight if I need to. Oh, I'm hungry. Stuff your face at camp. For now, watch the bloody road. But we've been looking at the road for hours. No travelers all day. Will one of you pay attention? Oi, who's that? I thought I was hiding behind a tree well enough, but apparently not. even hostile i'm just chilling guys what is the meaning of this I was gonna play it cool. I wasn't gonna be a dick. Oh, we got more guys over here? I guess my existence was an act of aggression, huh? Okay. Loliana, do your worst to these chests. Another silver chalice. I don't. You know, you've seen one silver chalice, you've seen them all, am I right? Oh, hey, guys. My God, this is a... I literally saw that as I was walking into it. It was the wildest experience. My brain was like, no, but my mouse and my keyboard hands were like, yes, it was the, it was the weirdest experience to see that trip mine and just know that I was going to run into it. Just like, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just destroy the barricade for no reason in particular. Yeah. Ah, Liliana, perhaps you could do something about these. I love how conspicuous these things are. Like, not even an attempt. I mean, I still ran into it, so I guess, like, 
I shouldn't give them too much shit for this. But. Alright, let's level her up. What do we need in order to get her... Oh, Alright, let's get her constitution up. Because she dies all the damn time. much as I hate her singing. All right, Alistair. Let's see. What do you need in order to do cool things? You can do both of these already. Uh, I don't need him to be taunting, so we'll do shield wall and all that kind of stuff. So let's just make sure that he is also strong. Let's give him, I don't know, herbalism. And shield tactics. All right. Now let's go ahead and pick some stuff yes. up here. Check this chest, see what kind of thing we don't need. Hey, Shale. Shale's like, thanks for opening that up. All right. Uh, Shale, death blow, regenerating burst, or renewed assault. Death blow sounds cool. Okay, maybe it's not that exciting. Uh, Shale explodes with energy. Well, let's go ahead and go. One, two, three. Go 40, 40. Good. Okay. Okay. Well, that was fun. Didn't we have? Did we have fun, chat? I think we had fun. I definitely needed Leliana to cut that string. You, you are absolutely right, Capra. I could not ever have done that myself. All I do is just I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go cut the whoops, and then I just fall into it. Yep. All right. Please, just can I please just get to dinner room, please? Please, please. I've said please like a thousand times. Ah, the old hometown. Now, I'm a lot stronger than I was last time I was here, but... This is going to be interesting. This would not be a particularly fun experience, but I'm not... Okay, this is a really loaded moment for me. Because this area is going to stir up a lot of ugh from my past. Not a particularly good time when I was living in the alienage here. And the last time we were here, I was almost thrown in jail for defending my people. Until Duncan took me away. I am now returning as a Grey Warden, which is going to create oodles of dissonance for the people around me. Right, like, and it what it speaks to is the fact that hierarchies are constructed. Hierarchies don't actually exist in any kind of, like, concrete, actual, omniscient way. Hierarchies are literally just made up. Because now when I come back here, the same person that I was before I left with a fancy new title, a little bit of stank on me from drinking Darkspawn blood, I come in here... And now all of a sudden there are going to be humans that are like, a Grey Warden? Oh! As opposed to, you rotten piece of filth. It's going to be weird for me. It's going to be weird for the humans. It's going to be weird for my fellow elves who may not take a particular liking to the fact that I left. And the fact that I now hold a title that gives me certain privileges that they don't have. So to go back into Denerim here with an expectation that it is going to be exactly like what it was when I left is going to get me off on the wrong foot. I have to anticipate that this is going to be an odd experience and that I'm going to respond to what happens instead of try to be proactive or construct what this is going to be up front. All that's going to do is create more anxiety and dissonance for me when there's already going to be a ton of it. And all of us can be mindful of this when you return to certain areas with different experiences and different titles and all sorts of stuff like that. You will have a weird experience. 
I wasn't given a choice to leave, but the reality is, Spartan, I still did, right? Like, I was still taken away. Duncan still took me. I'm still a great warden. So whether I was wanting to leave or not is inconsequential to the fact that there are some real consequences for the fact that I left. It's going to be very interesting to see how people handle this. All right, we got a lot to do here. So... <clears throat> Boy, this place is bleak. As there is but one world, one life, one death, there is but one God, and he is our maker. They are sinners who have given their love to false gods. What? No mention of dessert? Surely this is a miracle. <laughs> A miracle indeed, my my fair lady. All right, we're gonna have a lot of Chantry and Templar influence here, which is gonna be interesting since we already did the Mage Tower shit. Wonder if word has gotten to them. Sister Justine. It's strange that matters can be so tumultuous and yet the day still be so bright. Oh, my pardon, just thinking aloud. Are you here for the Chantry's board? Uh, who are you? I am Sister Justine, curator of the reliquary of this chantry. <laughs> and pride again. <laughs> it is hard to live up to the example of Andraste. Oh man, oh, I don't where do I even start? Humans having a prefrontal cortex and the ability to create symbols and abstract objects and all sorts of cool stuff like that is a wonderful thing. It's the thing that makes the technology that allows me to broadcast this video and save it for decades to come. It also gets us into some real trouble sometimes when we create these abstract boxes that we put ourselves into. My sense is that the Chantry, like many of the religions of the world, is dedicated to controlling aspects of what it is to be a biological organism that are and I don't use this word nat uh I don't use this word loosely natural you must be celibate no sex you must not pay much attention to your impulses you must not engage in pride you not, must not allow yourself to experience envy. You must, blah, you name it, right? There's a reason for that. Because if you can control people's primary emotions, impulses, directives, you can control the more sophisticated parts of them. So... She says, oh, pride again. It's hard to live up to the example of Andraste. And what she's really saying is, I should not indulge myself in the fact that I have achieved an accomplishment that I'm proud of because that's somehow bad. That's somehow selfish. That's somehow whatever the Chantry has told her pride is. Remember, the most powerful of all demons is the pride demon. So it wouldn't even necessarily surprise me if she's like, oh, if I get too prideful, maybe there's a demon talking to me or something like that. All this abstra abstract shit that we create and that people in positions of power in these organizations create as a means to control the core aspects of what it is to be a biological organism allows them to use you as a pawn in whatever machine that is that they are trying to push forward. So it makes me profoundly sad when I see somebody like this have an accomplishment in their life that they're genuinely proud of and then all of a sudden this symbolic and abstractly created thing that is her religion stops her from engaging with that it is a form of emotional suppression i talk all the time about emotional suppression being bad in interpersonal relationships well this is a form of organized emotional suppression 
She's oppressed by the very thing that she has dedicated her life to following. It's a terrible thing. You'll notice that, like, less sophisticated animals don't have this problem. Right? So it's a beautiful thing to have the brains we have, but man, do we sometimes use it to box ourselves in. What does the curator do? The archivist tends the books, and I tend the sacred relics. I also search for more to add to our collection, which is more difficult than it sounds. There are still relics to be found after all these years? My thought exactly, but I'm perpetually amazed at how quickly people accept fantastic claims at face value. A hawker on the street will claim to have an actual finger bone of Andraste. In this city alone, you could make the skeleton of ten prophets from fingers alone. It's profitable. Curators often accept them as genuine. I worry about the authenticity of even our most holy artifacts. I don't know if anybody subscribes to self werewolves on Reddit, but this... <laughs> How difficult is it to verify a relic? When I was a curator of a much smaller chantry in Orlais, I thought that false relics slipped through because of laziness. But the life of the cloth is never an easy one, and that explanation always seemed hollow to me. Now I believe it's the seduction of the divine. We all want a personal connection to the maker. We want to believe that what we hold in our hands is the actual sandal that slipped from Andraste's foot before the fires consumed her. Faith is of the heart, not of the head. When the heart is ungoverned by reason, charlatans have powerful tools to deceive. Oh, if that is not the ultimate... Oh my god, if that's not projection and a half. Oh my goodness. It would... Oh man, it would take me two hours to do an entire lecture on why what she just said is like oh my god she is subject to the very thing that she is talking about right now by the way i'm sure some people are gonna hear this conversation as me shitting on organized religion and i promise i'm not doing that if you can't acknowledge that there are problems with organized religion, then I don't know what to tell you. Like, it does good things for people. I'm not I'm not here telling people don't be religious and don't be spiritual, okay? But we have to talk about the real implications of the psychology of this kind of stuff, okay? She says faith is of the heart, not the head. When the heart is ungoverned by reason, charlatans have powerful tools to deceive. She is quite literally being taken advantage of. She's basically being told to follow her heart, to uncheck her head. If you introduce critical thought and brain power into a lot of the things that she has sunk her teeth into, you would probably find an immense amount of dissonance, dissonance and perhaps she might even second guess what it is that she has aligned herself with. So to get ahead of that, the Chantry has created a system of logic so that she continues to follow the Chantry. And then what they tell you is that the very thing that's happening to you is the problematic thing that other people are subject to. And there's a very real reason why this happens. We actually talked about this back in Red Dead Redemption. You should watch that playthrough if you haven't already, but we talked about this in Red Dead Redemption. The reason that that is the thing that she has been told to be afraid of is because the Chantry itself has thought of that. Every accusation is a confession, is a phrase that I think aligns here. These types of sentences that she just said to me create these really complex thickets of narratives that people can't get out of. And so she is being, again, she would probably tell you that she's here by choice. And there is truth to that. There is autonomy in her acceptance and following of the Chantry. And I'm not here to take that away from her. But if you want to engage in this kind of system in a meaningful way, you gotta turn your head on. 
And you got to do it in a way that allows you to ask yourself, is what I'm doing something that is in line with what I want to be doing? Or have I had all of this cultivated for me for the agenda of something that is so abstract, I have to just have faith. Faith is a dangerous tool because it asks people to concretize something that they cannot concretize. It's leveraging our brain's ability to create abstract symbols that we believe are important when there may or may not be any value to it at all. In this case, we're talking about the maker. Really fascinating stuff, man. I mean, seriously, I could talk about this for two hours. I mean, I would have to, I could design an entire lecture around what's happening here. <sighs> Balance, I'm going to, but here's the other thing, right? I'm not going to be a militant anti chance I guess, atheist in the context of Veraldin here, right? Like, I'm not going to be a militant atheist. I'm not going to come at her and be a dick to her because that doesn't solve anything either. I'm genuinely interested in what it is that she has to say, and she's engaging me in, in good faith. So I can empathize with what she just said while also kind of making the point that I just made in long form here a second ago, right? Which is balancing faith and reason can be quite difficult. There's real value in faith, by the way. It can really help people have a sense of direction and make decisions when they might otherwise be frozen. But yeah, balancing faith and reason is difficult. There's an implication there that faith generally doesn't align with reason. And often close to heretical. But I believe that the truth only increases the awe of the maker and his prophet, not demean it. Even false symbols have the power to inspire. But it seems every year we fall more out of touch with the real Andraste. Yeah, I mean, the lack of self-awareness in there is kind of wild, right? Like, I mean, I don't even blame her for that. Right, we fall more out of touch with the real Andraste. Perhaps because Andraste is a symbol and not a reality. Right? I mean, I get that Andraste existed or whatever, but the way that Andraste is talked about is very... <sighs> Alright, anyway. Um, how many real relics have you found? Actually, ooh, do you think the Urn of Sacred Ashes is real? Certainly. My research indicates that all of the ashes were gathered into a pot or urn, but it's been lost for centuries. That doesn't stop hawkers from selling pinches of the ashes of Andraste to gullible pilgrims. The real ashes may still be hidden somewhere, though it's possible the urn broke. Yeah, was Andraste good with her hands? Did she do good pottery? Because, yeah. Uh, how many real relics have you found? Well, there's one that might be real. I couldn't prove it wasn't. Perhaps you can understand my skepticism. So many claims. So few truths. Oh my god, my brain is whirring like a thousand miles an hour talking to this person. So many claims, so few truths, yet she claims to know... Uh, okay. I've made my point. You tell me about your job? You've shown admirable patience listening to my diatribe before. I will not bore you again. Suffice it to say, I look for and authenticate holy relics for the Chantry. My friends. When people engage with you, when they ask questions, when they continue to try to perpetuate a conversation, they often do so out of interest. When she says, I will not bore you again with my story about what I do, that is her taking away my autonomy to be interested in what it is that she has to say. She is basically projecting in a very overt way. She is, a, she is basically saying to me, I think potentially what I am talking about is boring. So I'm going to assume that you think it's boring. It's either that or the product of a learned experience from other engagements that she's had where she's been told that that's boring, which is also sad because now she's making an assumption about how I feel about this 
instead of paying attention to the hard data in the moment, which is that I am interested in what she has to say. So she is essentially stifling our engagement here, the chance at some kind of interpersonal connectedness because of an assumption rather than attending to the reality of the moment. A lot of people who struggle with social anxiety or have a hard time engaging in social situations make this mistake where you assume that people think certain things about what you're saying and you get all wrapped up in that as opposed to paying attention to what's actually happening. If people are asking you questions, if people are engaging with you and talking to you, they're doing that for a reason and they're doing that autonomously and you would do well to pay attention to that and try to cultivate that rather than getting in your own way. Cannot emphasize that enough. Of course, enjoy your visit to the Chantry. I will try. The deep dark before dawn's first light seems eternal, but know that the sun always rises. Okay. Back alley justice. Eliminate the criminals preying on innocent folk in Denerum's back alleys. In these dark times, we must work together against the common threat. Sergeant Kylon has brought disturbing news that should anger all righteous people. And our own alleyways, footpads, muggers, and miscreants lie in wait to profit from the chaos of our times. They infect us like a plague. A reward is available for any information on these low lives. Sergeant Kylon has also offered a heavy purse for any brave souls that can best these brigands and make Denerim a safe place once again. This humble chanter is added to the reward as well. May the maker bless all who heed this call. Death to the muggers. Yes, and the thing that's important to remember, BN, is that the pressure does not actually exist. The pressure is something that you are creating and cultivating. It is not a reality. Very, very important the way that we frame our social engagements, because if you frame it as a thing that is high stakes, you will it into existence. There is very little pressure in most social situations. It's something that we all kind of create out of anxiety. That said, if people are like preying on innocent folk and mugging them and stuff, we could we could hopefully bring them to uh, justice. Missing in action. Find Rexel. Recently, our hearts were lifted when many survivors of the Battle of Ostagar returned to us. Make her bless these men and women and have mercy on those who fell defending our children from the blight. Sadly, one of these heroes has gone missing. Rexel served in Tyr and Loghain's vanguard with distinction. Upon his return, his wife said he was prone to quiet reflection and frequented the local taverns. One afternoon, he left his home and never returned. This chanter was moved by the family's grief and is offering a pouch of coin for anyone who finds this hero. The chant says, In saving one man, you save us all. For if each of us lends a hand to aid his neighbor, anything is possible, especially now. Cool. Fazil's Request Master Fazil of the esteemed Guild of Free Sailors has informed this chanter that while about guild business, he was waylaid by bandits via guile and other chicanery. I'm gonna read that sentence again, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna rip a little bit into the chantry here, probably not in a way that you're expecting. Master Fazil of the esteemed Guild of Free Sailors has informed the Chanter that while about guild business, he was waylaid by bandits via guile and other chicanery. If I could venture a guess, probably half to three quarters of Denerim probably can't read. And the people that can read, I'm sure, are not verbose enough to actually understand that sentence. There is a lot of flowery language in here. This chanter's board is something that is, I think in some ways designed to continue to perpetuate wealth and favor of folks who come from immense amounts of privilege. If I'm a person who's really poor and doesn't have an education and I want to figure out a way to help my fellow man and I go look at the chanter's board and I start reading, I, one, probably can't read it, and two, I have no idea what these big-ass words are. 
Guile and chicanery. I was waylaid. How often do you hear these words? Let alone people in this town hearing this stuff. This board, quite literally, exists under not great pretenses. It's very elitist. And that bothers me. Like, it really does. I'm sitting here reading this, and I'm like, good God, how esoteric do you have to be to be able to understand what's going on in the context of these requests? If I can't read, I'm walking right past this. And there's gold in these here boards. It just feels weird to me. It, it just really doesn't sit right. Not that I need poor folks going to their death trying to take out thieves in the alleyway. But this really sets a tone. It really sets a tone. And this is the kind of stuff that, like, I really wish more people paid attention to. All right. I digress. He lost many valuables, but in particular, an antique sextant was removed forcibly from, this, from his person. This sextant is of considerable symbolic value, and it belonged to the first guild master of the Free Sailors. Master Fazl described his assailants as masked of foreign descent, perhaps to venture or free marches, and unusually coordinated and crafty. He has placed a hefty sum of coin with this chanter for the return of his sextant. That is all. Loghain's push. Brothers and sisters, word has arrived of an imminent conflict. Terran Loghain's honored forces continue to root out threats to our nation, and their actions deserve support from the common people. While it is unusual to post troop movements to the public board, I believe it is necessary for brethren near the affected area to respect the honored Terran by aiding his troops. Provide whatever comfort you feel they deserve, and Ferelden will be the stronger for it. Treat these brave soldiers as you would treat Loghain himself, and the spiritual rewards will be generous. God. Jet, can I please just get a break from the nonsense of Ferelden? I can't because I'm playing a game that exists in Ferelden. That is a perfect example. It's a perfect example of how you use organized religion and spirituality and the faith of your constituents to completely blow past general boundaries. If these people go to those, because here's the scenario I'm thinking of. You go to that camp and you find those troops. And let's just say those troops sexually harass you. And they tell you, you know what would be real nice? You know what would really give fuel to the troops? Would be some, uh, some sexy time. You go in there and you go, well... Spiritual rewards will be generous. Doesn't really feel good to me, but I'm going to trust the maker. I'm going to trust my faith because I showed up here under good intentions that were in line with what the Chantry wants for me and what the maker wants for me. So sure, oh ye soldier, feel free to sexually harass me and perhaps I'll even do what you ask because of this. This is why the mixture of religion and politics is terrifying. Because you literally have a board here of people advocating for Terran Loghain, a political figure, and his troops, a political pawn, and mixing spiritual directive with what these... You're essentially saying, whatever these guys want, if you do it, you're in the favor of the maker. It's gross. You could go chill in the deep rooms. Not much nonsense there, you know? Oh, God. Bioware, if any of you are watching that were part of developing this game, bravo for making this world bleak and realistic and putting so much complexity in here. I really cannot emphasize enough how amazing this game is at creating scenarios that are so in line with like the darker, grayer areas of what it is to be alive and in a society and system. 
this game nails it in a way that I really can't think of any other games that match. It is absolutely fantastic. I don't like when people use flowery language to confuse others. Yep. Yep. It's a it creates a real boundary. Lightning, thank you so much for the five months. I appreciate that very much, friend. Thank you. In the name of Andraste, Bride of the Maker, be welcome in this house. While the cathedral is closed, if you need to make wedding or funeral arrangements, you'll have to talk to Sister Oma. Did someone die? I remember a funeral. King Kaelin died, remember? Along with most of the army at Ostagar? Maker guide them all. Why is the cathedral closed? That which you fear. Living in the shadow of death alone, I have seen it is only a cloud passing before the sun. The death toll at Ostagar was staggering. We've had a funeral every day for a lost son or daughter of Denerim, and we've many more yet to hold. I... <laughs> What's wrong with your friend is like the worst possible way that you could ask this question. Okay. There is so much judgment laced within that question. What's wrong with your friend? I am literally saying something's wrong with your friend when I say that. Okay. You can be curious about people without casting judgment within that sentence, right? Like, hey, that was an interesting thing to say. Oh, I'm not sure what that meant. Say something like that. Also, speak to the guy directly. Why do I got to look at this guy and say, what's wrong with your friend while the guy's sitting right in front of us? Be like, hey, I, I don't really understand that. What does that mean? Like, try to engage with the guy. Give the guy the benefit of the doubt before I look at his friend and go, what's wrong with that guy? What are we doing? Are they singing the chant now? It's a funeral, isn't it? He should have retired to Val Royo years ago, but he wanted to stay and serve the remainder of his days in his homeland. It's the lyrium that does this. Oof. Why are we... T oh my god. Why are we talking to this guy as if he's not standing right next to you? Lyrium did this to him? Why doesn't he stop taking it? He wouldn't be a Templar anymore. Blessed are they who stand before the corrupt and the wicked and do not falter. He doesn't forget who he is. Even if he can't remember anything else. Whoa. Yet... He remembers verses of the the Bible, I guess. I forget what it's called. Right? Which goes to show just how ingrained that shit is. You start that young, you get that really ingrained, right? So he's lost all his memories, yet he can still quote the Bible and he still knows who he is. The chant. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's wild, man. So he still takes it, because otherwise he loses his Templar. Maker, so he lost, he lost himself, and he... Wow. Often portrayed as stoic and grim, the Order of Templars was created as the martial arm of the Chantry. Armed with the ability to dispel and resist magic in addition to their formidable combat talents, the Templars are uniquely qualified to act as both a foil for the apostates, mages who refuse to submit to the authority of the Circle, and a first line of defense against the dark powers of blood mages and abominations. While mages often resent the Templars as symbols of the Chantry's control over magic, the people of Thetis see them as saviors and holy warriors, champions of all that is good, armed with piety enough to protect the world from the ravages of foul magic. In reality, the Chantry's militant arm looks first for skilled warriors with unshakable faith in the Maker, with a flawless moral center as a secondary concern. That's key. Templars must carry out their duty with an emotional distance, and the Order of Templars prefers soldiers with religious fervor and absolute loyalty over paragons of virtue who might question orders when it comes time to make difficult choices. God, if that's not a reflection of the Chantry trying to control the masses, I don't know what is, right? We don't want people that actually align with our idealistic views. We want people who at the end of the day are willing to do some dirty shit in the, in the spirit of what we want. That's a, that's a hugely, hugely important paragraph to put the Chantry into context. You gotta kill a mage here and there. You gotta kill a mage. 
You gotta, you gotta engage and do some crazy shit in gray areas. We'd rather have you than somebody who's gonna turn around and go, but doesn't the Chantry want us to... No, 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 not here. No, 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 no. The Templar's power derives from the substance Lyrium, a mineral believed to be the raw element of creation. While mages use Lyrium in their arcane spells and rituals, Templars ingest the primordial mineral to enhance their abilities to resist and dispel magic. Lyrium use is regulated by the Chantry, but some Templars suffer from Lyrium addiction, the effects of which include paranoia, obsession, and dementia. Templars knowingly submit themselves to this treatment in the service of the Order and the Maker. It is this sense of ruthless piety that most frightens mages when they draw the Templars' attention. When the Templars are sent to eliminate a possible blood mage, there is no reasoning with them, and if the Templars are prepared, the mage's magic is all but useless. Driven by their faith, the Templars are one of the most feared and respected forces in Thetis. From Patterns Within Form by Halden, First Enchanter of Starkhaven, 880 Blessed. Okie dokie. Magic exists to serve man and never. Mage's collective bag. Mage's collective liaison. What's up? Take this. You've earned it. Thanks, man, I guess. Blood of warning. While they tend to be careful and judicious in their use of force, the Templars do indeed make mistakes. I understand that several relatives of our friends among the Collective will soon become targets of the Chantry, and while I trust that this will not lead to lasting harm for those innocents, I wish to ensure that those targeted are fairly warned and evacuated before the Chantry can send its message. I ask that a noble soul take this bundle of vials attached to this missive and find the four homes the Chantry is likely to target in Denerim. Mark the front door of each home with the goat's blood from the vials. These relatives will understand the message and evacuate before the Chantry can threaten them. Interesting. Man, there's a lot of gray area on this. This collective is only successful at the pleasure of the Templars. Their continued devotion to our safety requires certain concessions on our part. In the interest of renewing our relationship with these fine and generous agents of the Maker, we ask that a willing man or woman of character grace our good friends with the gift of Lyrium. Procure ten Lyrium potions and offer them up to Knight Commander Harith in Redcliffe. <coughs> I don't know that I really care to do that. Have you seen me? The Collective is saddened at the absence of the great mage, Renald. Our friend has not been seen in quite some time, and our gatherings are lesser for the loss of his tales of ribald exploits and the aroma of his delicious twice-bait meat pies. Renold was last seen traveling in the direction of the Brazilian forest. Oh, how he did so love the outdoors. Anyone who returns with evidence of his whereabouts of the beloved mage, Renold, will be rewarded. Scrolls of Bannistor. In times such as these, one must suspect even his neighbor of the darkest dealings, lest they cast a shadow upon those who labor under the light. I, Jubasto, have heard that have heard tell of Cabal of Maleficarum performing rituals in the dark near my sanctum, and I certainly wish to see them brought to justice for their dark deeds. I hesitate, however, to accuse them of foul sorcery without a full understanding of the trappings, ritual, and appearance the dark magic requires. The writings of the hated Maleficarum Banistor should be suitable. Should a courier be available to procure me copies of the Scrolls of Banistor, I would be appropriately grateful. <laughs> What's in this wood crate? Nice. Hooded courier. My client appreciates your generosity. Okay. I guess I'm I guess I'm generous. We'll talk to Sergeant Kylon in a minute. Wade's Emporium. 
Wait! I did not Are you sure, Trevor? That is because I'm not. I am a golem. But you were once a woman and a dwarf. Doesn't that mean anything to you? The bard speaks of someone who lived and died five centuries ago. What have I in common with her? You share a soul. I do not. It talks in riddles. Desist or I shall crush its head. Oh, <laughs> that's a boundary. Trevor, are we going into the bar? Welcome, friends. Welcome to Wade's Emporium. We have the finest armors in Denerim, maybe in all of Ferelden. How may we assist you? Ooh, in all of Ferelden. Tell me about Wade. You're obviously not from around here. Wade is possibly the most brilliant armorsmith in all of Ferelden. That's not true, Heren. The dwarves of Orzammar make the finest armors around. These piles of rust droppings you force me to make are worthless compared to their work. You never let me have the time, the materials to make something special. Customers expect their armor in a timely fashion, not years late like the last time. That happened once, just once, and you never let it drop. <laughs> These guys are awesome. <laughs> I feel like I just walked into like high fashion armory right now. Oh my god. So good. So good. I love that he rolled the R on Rust. That was just beautiful. Mwah. <laughs> Who's in charge here? I am. Wade owns the Emporium, but without expert assistance and, well, prodding, let's just say the Emporium has improved substantially with our partnership but i do miss the good old days i could really take my time to make quality oh by all means you can return to them and to the gruel you used to fancy no no sorry herein <laughs> let's see what you got for sale <laughs> certainly <laughs> i love it okay okay so i guess some decent stuff um wow this is actually this is made a dragon bone i gotta sell some stuff i before i even consider buying i gotta sell some shit here um Grey Warden's Longsword. We'll dump that. Vanguard. The Nug Crusher. I could give that to Sten. Which, okay, Nug Crusher. Forge Master's Hammer. Triton's Maul. Triton's Maul. All right, so get rid of the Nug Crusher. Winter's Breath. Oak branch, magic staff, studded helmet, dwarven helmet, helm of the legion. Um, I don't. It's. No, I don't need that. Juggernaut helm. I do want that. Rock knocker. We'll hold on to that. Holding on to shit. I'm never gonna use, man. I'm so bad about this. I'm like, oh, but what if? Like, I'm never gonna use this shit, and yet here I am. Why do I have that leather armor? Armor of the Legion, Juggernaut plate armor, effort, silver. Like, I just, I, they're. Brook shield, apprentice cowl, get rid of that. Tevinter shield, get rid of that. Remarkable ruby, goodbye. Small good bar, goodbye. I know this pains so many of you to watch me sell these gifts instead of use them to gain the favor of my party. But I. To those of you that are like, why do you do that, Dr. Mick? I think it's a really stupid mechanic that I can just hand my party mates a gift and then all of a sudden they're like, they're like, oh yeah, all that interpersonal bullshit. Don't worry about it, brother. We're good now. Thanks for the silk carpet. I don't know. I just think it's a, I just think it's kind of a dumb concept. Uh, 
All right, we got. I got rid of a good amount of stuff there. That was that was good. Right. Only if I. Yeah, well, I mean, like Brian, you know, I know we had a real hard exchange there. I know you got timed out from chat, and you were like, "Well, Doctor Mick, here's a jet ski." I'd be like, I don't know why you're giving me a jet ski. I live in the desert. You're like, Dr. Mick, here's a recording PC. I don't know. What's up, Siora? All relationships aren't completely transactional based on consumer goods. Only yours and mine. Thanks for the sub. Love letter. one's paramour when we last did, when last we embraced one noticed the red redolence of another's company but one was unmindful okay <laughs> master wade Torin, the bloody customers are bothering me again. What do I pay you for, anyhow? Sorry, sorry. Wade is a genius. Truly, you will be astonished by his work. Uh, but he doesn't deal with customers. If you need anything, please ask me. And tell him I don't want anyone looking over my shoulders either. I'm thinking, blast it all. <laughs> uh, truly sorry, sire. We call them sires, so there's some kind of power dynamic there. Man, they are... I actually didn't end up looking at his goods. With... Welcome back. You looking for fine armor? Can you tell me about the city? The city is full to bursting. With people from the country coming, trade is thriving. Especially those that deal in weapons and armor. Master Wade is especially in demand. Cool. Certainly. Uh, oh god, you have all the shit that I sold you. Uh, I have so much gold now. Yeah, none of this is that great, buddy. Yeah, you, you're not giving me, like, stats. I mean, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but I see right through your veneer. Your salesman's veneer. Let's go steal from these people, huh, Liliana? Great sword. Knight Commander Tavish. What's up, Knight Commander Tavish? Turn your attention elsewhere. My business does not concern you. <laughs> Truly noted. Thank you and farewell. Okie dokie. Nice to meet you. Door of the blood. Door of a blood mage's relative. Oh. Oh. So the Chantry or the Templars are going to come after the relative of the Blood Mage? Interesting. Okay. You know, I do got to walk back a little bit of like how I've handled the Blood Mages. I know they're not all bad people. So, go to the remaining homes of accused blood mage relatives. Yeah, blood mage relatives. Yeah, you got to get out of here. I, I, ugh, I have I thought hate. about what the sister said. Our last talk. And? I would like the sister to explain to me the purpose of birds. Birds? <laughs> what kind of birds? Any kind. Evil little demons that strafe the ground with their droppings. What reason could your maker have for such things? The same he has for any evil, such as the darkspawn, if one were to equate the two. I have a difficult time believing in any higher power that would inflict evil upon the world. Does it enjoy such jests? Perhaps there is a lesson to learn in it. Not all lessons are easy, Shell. <laughs> It's any wonder this maker has so many followers. I mean, birds. What was he thinking? I, 
you know, I really like the engagement between Shale and Liliana. Like, I really like it. Shale kind of represents some of the more critical thought related to these types of things. And Liliana is more of, like, the rational faith, so to speak. But Shale does bring up an important point. It's a point that I made back in, like, episode one or two of this playthrough, which is... If the Maker is this omniscient being that wants people to behave in a certain way, why on earth do you create the things that, like, go against that? Right? Like, if you don't want people to have sex before they're married, why not make people incapable of having sex before they get married? And then you turn it on when they get married, no pun intended. If you want people to be happy and healthy, why create disease? Why create childhood cancer? Why do that stuff? And if the answer is because I like toying with people and I like to, you know, fuck around a little bit with stuff. Okay, I can accept that. But like this idea that it's like this all-powerful, wonderful, amazing thing, and yet there's all this awfulness. It makes one wonder, right? So, like, Shale asking that question, I think, is reasonable. And if Liliana says, well, sometimes this stuff is put on here to test us or whatever because that's what she believes, alrighty, right? None of us know the actual answer. So it makes for very engaging dialogue between the two of them. What's up, Sarah? Good day. Okay. Notice that Shale refers to Liliana as sister, whereas... With you and Alistair, she refers to both of you as it. Yeah, I don't really know what that's about. Perhaps maybe her gender identity is becoming more salient. I don't know. And so there's a sense of, like, kinship with Leliana. Hard to know. Wrong person. Other armor. Don't want it. Okay. Um. Uh, what is it? I have work to do. I have a note from your master. What does it say? Ah. Uh, I knew this would happen. Just when I was starting to get good. Well, thanks. I guess. Oh. Two of them can be found in Denrim, the others procuring a slightly rare item from Orzammar. I think I talked to the one in Orzammar. I did talk to the one in Orzammar. Key required. Ooh. Key required. Dwarven I recognize you from Ostagar, and trust this blood. You're a Grey Warden, Duncan's apprentice. You killed my friend, and good King Kaelin. I demand satisfaction, sir. That's a hell of an accusation, bud. Do you see that with your own eyes? Because if you didn't, because you didn't, because it didn't happen, holy hell. Uh... This is a scary scenario. Because if this guy has his mind made up, we're in trouble. And the fact that he's willing to just come straight out with the accusation like that tells me that he very likely does have his mind made up. So I have to tread carefully. I'm sure that I could beat this guy in a fight. But I don't want to fight. My sense is that perhaps this guy is seeing me as guilty by association. <laughs> He's been prop <coughs> He's been propagandized by Loghain, right? Because Loghain immediately said, as soon as you see Grey Wardens, terminate them. It's their fault that this happened. 
So who knows, right? Like this guy, so, this guy wasn't there when Kalen died. Kalen is dead. He has no control. He has no true narrative. So he goes to Kalen's trusted advisor in Loghain, believes what Loghain has to say. That gives him a sense of direction and narrative. And then he's been given a directive to go after any Grey Wardens you see because it's their fault that your friend is, is dead, right? So Loghain, the reason that Loghain can control people like this is because he's given clarity amidst ambiguity, which is all people want. And he's done it very confidently and he's done it under the pretense of his position in Ferelden <clears throat> and in Denerim. So this guy coming at me this way, he's coming at me with institutionalized power or at least perceived institutionalized power. And I can't say I necessarily blame him for coming at me like this, but it is not, he has no reason to believe what I'm gonna say. So I gotta tread lightly here. This is, the, this is the scary part of being propagandized by people in positions of power when they give you answers when you're looking for them and you don't have them otherwise. It's really, really, I agree. It's absolutely, you're absolutely right, Siora. It is scary how effective this is. Oh. I might intimidate him. Because I do have to survive here. And I don't think this guy's going to let me go otherwise. And if he goes around and tells people if I've got all the police... I mean, this is a huge risk coming to Denerim as a Grey Warden. So... The reason I don't necessarily... <coughs> Excuse me. The reason I don't want to say satisfaction is because that passively outs myself, right? Because if I'm not a Grey Warden, my first response to him would be that I'm not. If I'm going to acknowledge that I'm a Grey Warden, I need to do it in a way that controls the situation. If I was able to kill King Kalen, I could certainly kill you. So I'm going to leverage that to intimidate him because all of these other things... I don't know that this lie is going to work. And if he knows what a Grey Warden smells like, because I've got Darkspawn taint in me, and I lose that battle, right? I can't afford that. This, there's no way I'm going to talk him out of this. Loghain's charges against the Wardens are false. I, no. And uh, I gotta go. That's not good either, right? Because I'm not denying what he's saying to me. He's put me in a really crappy position. He's controlling this engagement, so I've got to flip it on him, and, and I need to control this engagement. And I'm going to do that by intimidating him because I know that I can back this up if I need to. Lower your voice or I'll silence it permanently. I have heard of the Grey Warden's prowess and you seem more capable than you did at Ostagar. I won't throw my life away. Too many people depend on me and I doubt guards would pose any challenge to you. But by word and deed here you condemn yourself, sir. I don't care what you think. Alright, got ourselves out of that situation, right? Yeah, like if I could beat the shit out of King Kalen, I could beat the shit out of you, brother. So I could leverage that, that fear to help myself there. Grey Warden poster. Don't believe the lies, friends of the Grey Wardens assemble. The hidden pearl holds the key to resistance. The griffins will rise again. Okay. Not like a high traffic area that you put this poster in here, but gossip. Oh, yeah. The mages of that tower off in the middle of Lake Callanhard all up and turned into a pack of demons. No. Oh, what happened? They're all dead. Templars killed them, I suppose. Well, good on them, I say. Yeah, 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 the the, the, the Templars did it. Yeah, it was the Templars. The, the Templars had this book they got from the Fade, and... Yeah, man, it was kind of crazy. You know how Templars are. You know, the Lyrium. You, you forget you have the book that could have, you know, outed the Blood Mages. So, it, those d darn Lyrium led to, to... Oh, just the memory thing. Yeah, and they just kind of had to kill everybody because they yeah they forgot the book. 
it was really unfortunate circumstance really just a just a huge bummer i when i when i got there it was too late i mean i i, I would have done something about it but i it's just it was a little too late oh oh geez those 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 templars man those those poor poor mages poor 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 mages Brother Gina TV's home. Brother Gina TV. I feel like I know you. <laughs> what a humble abode for a guy who literally catalogs all of history. What's up, Waylon? Yes. What are you doing here? Uh oh, you mean why did I just walk into your home without knocking? <laughs> uh, I'm looking for Brother Jenna TV. Brother Jenna TV? Why? I want to talk to him about his research. His research? Oh, you mean his search for Andraste's ashes? He was on the trail of the urn of sacred ashes, yes. Whether he found it, the maker only knows. I haven't seen Brother Genitivi in weeks. He said no word. It's so unlike him. I'm afraid something has happened. Genitivi's research into the urn may have led him into danger. Oh. Um. Why would Sir... Me asking him, what do you think he discovered? And do you think he's in trouble because the urn adds nothing to this conversation? So why would searching for the urn lead him to danger? Let's see if this guy's got any insight into that. <clears throat> Perhaps the urn has been lost for a reason. I pray for Genitivi's safety, but hope dwindles with each passing day. I, I tried to send help, but some knights came from Redcliffe looking for him not long ago. I sent them after Genitivi, and they too have disappeared. Mm. Where'd you send them, big guy? Now don't ask me where they went. You'll go after them. And what if ill luck should befall you too? This Why don't you let me decide a curse that? On all of us, some things are, are not meant to be found. I know that now. Bro, you don't get to police my boundaries. You, you, you don't get to make that decision for me. I get to decide that. I'm willing to risk it. Tell me where he went. So be it. All he said before he left was that he would be staying at an inn near Lake Callenhard, investigating something in that area. Do you know what he was investigating? I don't know. <clears throat> All I discovered from going through his research was that he was staying at the inn. Oh, I was already there, but you just said he spoke to you and told you that. Y yes, of course he told me, but I also went through his things to see if I could find other clues to his whereabouts. Oh, is that right? Hmm. Hmm? This is why, friends, you listen when people talk. So many people focus on what their response is going to be. This guy's giving us new information and our brain goes brrrr and starts making these connections. But if you stay present and you listen to what people say and you hear inconsistencies, you can sometimes use that to your advantage. In this case, I can press him a little bit in order to get some good info. Because he tripped up a little bit. He's probably all up in his head about this. Maybe he's got some sort of personal directive. I'm not going to assume the worst here. But this is why it is deeply important to listen to people. Particularly when there is information that you need to get. If you let people talk, the inconsistencies will come out. Oftentimes, because it is actually very hard for us to continue to curate a, a truth that's built around lies. Our memory will jump over to the reality of what happened if we're not constantly monitoring it. As many people have probably said to you at some point, right? Like, if you only tell the truth, you can have a shitty memory. It's not entirely wrong. <clears throat> Sound nervous, big dog? You hiding something? That's n not true. I told you everything I know. Brother Ginny TV told us, t told me about the inn, and that's all. Oh, us, huh? Who's us? 
You're lying, big dog. We both know it. I keep calling him big dog. I don't know why I'm doing that. You're lying. We both know it. I gave you a chance to turn aside and forget you ever heard of Genitivi and the Urn, but you persisted. Now it has come to this. And just stay, forgive me, I do this in your name. Now, You'll never find your Hey, that's our last character page. Brother Ferdinand Genitivi. As it is the duty of all true sons of the Chantry to make the chant heard from every corner of the world, I made it my mission to find as many corners of the world as possible. The Maker can hardly expect us to do one without the other. Excerpt from In the Pursuit of Knowledge, The Travels of a Chantry Scholar by Brother Genitivi. Brother Genitivi is one of the Chantry's most well-known scholars, primarily on the basis of the stories he has published, which may of his contemporaries dismiss it, which many of his contemporaries dismiss as fanciful, of his travels across the length and breadth of Thetis. His travels, in rather too curious nature, led him to study a folklore, which gave him the notion that he could track down that most debated of all artifacts, the urn of sacred ashes. He announced that he had found what appeared to be the trail of the urn left in the legends of the regions through which it had passed from Minrathus on its way into hiding. Okie dokie. Well, I don't know what Waylon was hiding. But, uh, okay. Let's poke around a little bit here, huh? I want to... What's this book? I want to read that book. Another book. Excuse me, Alistair. Dragon Cults. Let us suggest for the moment that a high dragon <clears throat> is simply an animal. A cunning animal, to be sure, but in possession of no true self-awareness or sentience. There has not, after all, been a single recorded case of a dragon attempting to communicate or performing any act that could not likewise be attributed to a clever beast. How, then, does one explain the existence of so-called dragon cults throughout history? One dragon cult might be explainable, especially in light of the reverence of the old gods in the ancient Tevinter Imperium. In the wake of the First Blight, many desperate imperial citizens turned to the worship of real dragons to replace the old gods who had failed them. A dragon, after all, was a god figure that they could see. It was there, as real as the archdemon itself, and, as evidence makes clear, did offer a degree of protection to its cultists. <clears throat> Other dragon cults could be explained in light of the first. Some cult members might have survived and spread the word. The worship of old gods was as widespread as the Imperium itself. Certainly such secrets could have made their way into many hands. But there have been reports of dragon cults even in places where the Imperium never touched, among folks who had never heard of the old gods or had any reason to. How does one explain them? Members of a dragon cult live in the same lair as a high dragon, nurturing and protecting its defenseless young. In exchange, the high dragon seemed to permit those cultists to kill a small number of those young in order to feast on draconic blood. That blood is said to have a number of strange long-term effects, including bestowing greater strength and endurance, as well as an increased desire to kill. In many it may breed insanity as well. Navarran dragon hunters have said these cultists are incredibly powerful opponents. The changes in the cultists are a form of blood magic, surely. But how did the symbiotic relationship between the cult and the high dragon form in the first place? How did the cultists know to drink the dragon's blood? How did the high dragon convince them to care for its young or know that they would? Is there more to draconic intelligence than we have heretofore guessed at? No member of a dragon cult has ever been taken alive, and what accounts exist from the days of the Navarran Hunters record record only mad rants and impossible tales of godhood. With dragons only recently reappearing and still incredibly rare, we may never know the truth, but the question remains. 
From Flame and Scale by Brother Florian, Chantry Scholar 928 Dragon. Interesting. Wondering how you shrug off condemnation like it happened a minute ago so soundly. Because you're secure in your truth of how Ostagar went down because you trust that you can keep yourself safe where it's backlash, a mix or something else. It's a cool question. Yes, I know the truth of what happened, right? I was there. I literally bared witness to it. Well, kind of. I didn't technically bear witness to it because I was in the tower when it happened, but because we got to see the cutscene, I guess, I, it's it's a kind of a weird thing, right? Like, you have to kind of headcanon your way into knowing exactly what happened because we were given that omniscient information. Technically, I was in the tower when it happened, so I don't necessarily know exactly what happened. But yes, there is a level of security in knowing what it was that I witnessed and also knowing that I could, if we needed to resort to violence, I could win that fight. So it's kind of having a bit of cognitive dexterity in those moments to remain calm and to focus on my response to what's happening rather than just impulsively reacting to what's going on. Responding versus reacting is super important. Sometimes you have to leverage security. Sometimes you have to leverage information. Sometimes you have to leverage bluffing and confidence. It really depends on the scenario. But yeah, in that moment, like what would make sense there to that guy is he basically acknowledged up front that I am a person who is capable of killing a king. So in that moment, I can realize that this guy is particularly sensitive to power and to control. And so if I could kill the king, I could kill you. So in order for me to create a system where he doesn't say anything and I keep myself and my party safe, I use a bit of intimidation there. I leverage what he brought to me which was an acknowledgement that I am a powerful warrior, right? He shot himself in the foot by going that direction. He gave me too much information up front that I was able to turn around on him. I hope that makes sense when I say that. Yes, my prowess as a warrior is an important piece of that. Ooh, good, more stuff to read. <clears throat> Chantry hierarchy. The divine is the titular head of the Chantry, although since the schism split the Imperial Chantry into its own faction, there are now in fact two divines at any one time. One divine, informally called the White Divine, is a woman housed in the Grand Cathedral in Val Royo. The other, known as the Black Divine, is a man housed in the agent sp in the Argent Spire in Minrathis. Neither divine recognizes the existence of the other, and the informal names are considered sacrilegious. No matter the gender, a divine is addressed as most holy or your perfection. Beneath the rank of divine is the grand cleric. Each grand cleric presides over numerous chantries and represents the highest religious authority for their region. They travel to Val Royale when the College of Clerics convenes, but otherwise remain where they are assigned. All grand clerics are addressed as your grace. Beneath the Grand Cleric is the mother, or in the Imperial Chantry, the father. If a mother is in charge of a particular chantry, revered is appended to her title. These are the priests responsible for administering to the spiritual well-being of their flock. A mother or revered mother is addressed as your reverence. Brothers and sisters from the rank and file of the chantry, or brothers and sisters form the rank and file of the chantry and consist of three main groups, affirmed, initiates, and clerics. Affirmed are the lay brethren of the Chantry, those regular folk who have turned to the Chantry for succor. Or succor. Never know how to say that word. Often they are po people who have led a difficult or irreligious life and have chosen to go into seclusion or even orphans and similar unfortunates who were raised into the Chantry life. The affirmed take care of the Chantry and are in turn afforded a life of quiet contemplation, no questions asked. Only those folk who take vows become initiates. These are men and women in training, whether in academic knowledge or the martial skills of a warrior. All initiates receive an academic education, although only those who seek to become Templars learn how to fight in addition. <clears throat> Clerics are the true academics of the Chantry. Those men and women, and non-binary folks, who have dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge. They are often found in Chantry archives, sages presiding over libraries of books and arcane knowledge, the most senior of these clerics placed in charge of such archives are given the title of elder, although such a rank is still beneath that of mother. All other brothers and sisters are addressed simply by nothing, or simply by noting their title before their name, such as brother Genitivi, from a guide for ambassadors from Rivain. 
it's nice uh, actually that there is this document that essentially helps people understand some of the cultural norms if they're going to engage with the chantry. There is real merit to that. Like when you're going to go into another context where there, there are different norms and rules and customs and stuff like that, it really behooves you to do your research rather than learning on the fly by constantly screwing up and being corrected. Uh, in fact, you actually show a level of respect and potentially even allyship for certain communities, areas, cultures, when you do your research up front. There may be some subjective differences that you come across when you go into that context, but knowing some of the general cultural norms is a really good thing to do. Like if you're gonna vacation in another country, you should read up a little bit on some of the customs and things that you should be aware of, of how to engage people in a way that shows respect and acknowledgement for what it is that's important to them. So that document that we just read is actually a really useful thing to have. You don't have to agree with those norms, but if you want to be able to engage in good faith, you need to respect them. I am ready. Americans tend to be very bad at this. Americans tend to just go wherever and be like, why doesn't everybody here in France speak English for me? And you know, shit like that. Like we, Americans are very much cultivated to just barge our way into the lives of everybody else. But that's a bit of a sweeping generalization, but I've certainly experienced that many times in my life. Steel, steel symbol of Andraste. Ooh, I bet Liliana would like that. Jenna TV's research. Amidst ramblings about local legends and ancient trade routes, one passage stands out. The village of Haven in the Frostback seems a good place to start. Pity is not on any maps. Hell yeah. Corpse. What? The body of the real Waylon? Whoa. There's, oh man, there's some nefarious shit going on here, Brother Jenna TV. Plot's thickening, man. Getting real thick. Thick plot. I want to read this book. This is driving me crazy that I can't click that book. I really hope I'm not missing something. I love to read all the things in this game. Wow. Okay. Well... Wonders of Thetis shop. Let's check out the Wonders of Thetis. Ooh. This is a neat place. Strap in, guys, because we're doing a lot of reading tonight. Denerim. <clears throat> when anyone in Ferelden speaks of going to the city, they inevitably mean Denerim. There is no other place in the kingdom which rivals it. Not in size, population, wealth, or importance. It is the seat of of the Theron family, the capital of Ferelden, the largest seaport, and by ancient tradition, the meeting place of the land's meet. As well, Denerim was the birthplace of Andraste, one of them anyway, as several other sites claim to have been the prophet's early home, including Jader in Orlay. The Chantry takes no stance on which site's claim is valid, but it is well known that Andraste was Ferelden by birth. When visiting the pilgrimage site in Denerim, it is inadvisable to mention Jader at all. The city rests at the foot of Dragon's Peak, a, solid, a solitary mountain scarred by ancient lava flows. During Andraste's lifetime, it reputedly filled the sky with a great column of black ash and sent burning rock raining down as far away as the free marches, but it is now considered extinct. Some believe it merely sleeps and will again darken the sky with ash and fire when the last Ferelden King dies, but this is highly unlikely. Okie cool. 
Geography of Thetis. Thetis is bounded to the east by the Ar Amaranthian Ocean. Or Amaranthine. Amaranthine Ocean. To the west by Terrasian Forest and the Hunterhorn Mountains. To the south by the snowy wastes that lie beyond the Orkney Mountains. And to the north by Donark Forest. <laughs> the word Thetis is to winter in origin. Originally used to refer to lands that bordered the Imperium. As the Imperium lost its stranglehold on conquered nations, more and more lands became Thetis until finally people applied the name to the entire continent. The northern part of Thetis is divided amongst the Anderfels, the Tevinter Imperium, Antiva, and Rivian, or Ravain, with the islands held by the Canari just off the coast. Central Thetis consists of the Free Marches, Navarra, and Orlay, with Ferelden to the south. What lies beyond the snowy wastes is a mystery. The freezing temperatures and barren land have kept even the most intrepid cartographers at bay. Similarly, the western reaches of the Anderfels have never been fully explored, even by the Anders themselves. We do not know if the dry steppes are shadowed by mountains or if they extend all the way to the Nameless Sea. To a Nameless Sea. There must be other lands, continents, or islands, perhaps across the Aramanthine or north of Parvalin, for the Canari arrived in Thetis from somewhere. But beyond that deduction, we know nothing. Yes, make it quick. <coughs> I have a note here from your master. Strange. Let's see this. I knew it. I gave that man the best seven weeks of my life. Well, I guess he won't have me to push around anymore. <laughs> guess not, man. Tranquil Proprietor. Welcome to the wonders of Thedas. We carry items crafted by the Circle, as well as a variety of antiquities. Is there anything you would like to see? I'd like to browse your wares. Uh, ancient map of the Imperium. I'd give that tome to a healing mage if I had one. The ANR. When the Imperium occupied the area that is present-day Ferelden, they had two sites dedicated to magical experimentation at the extreme ends of the Imperial Highway. The southern one was the Fortress of Ostagar, which looked out over the Kakari Wilds. The northern one was Anar, although the exact location is now a secret known only to a handful of Templars. Whatever it was the Taventer were trying to discover at Anar, their work was never completed. The fortress was overrun by disciples of Andraste upon hearing the news of her death. According to legend, it was a massacre, eerily silent, for the invaders caught the mages while all but one of them were in the Fade. The site was left structurally sound, but, the spirit, but spiritually damaged. Possibly because of this, the Chantry chose to put it to use as a prison. Accused Maleficarum and apostates are held in the confines of ANR. Those who have a powerful connection to the Fade, and particularly to demons, will inevitably attract something across the veil, making the guilty somewhat easier to tell from the innocent. From a fire, circles, and Templars, a history of magic in the Chantry by Sister Patrine, Chantry scholar. Love this little fish here. Love how somebody caught this little fish and was like, yeah, I'll mount that. I probably won't do any better. Do you think they get all this stuff? Do you think they um, have any miniature golem dolls? He asks right in front of Gollum. <clears throat> or shale scroll the canary Ooh. <clears throat> anyone who travels far enough to the north will eventually encounter the canary white-haired bronze-skinned giants a head again taller than a man with frighteningly calm demeanors and a sort of sparkling fire behind their eyes for quite a long time people believed that all canary were male that their men and women were simply indistinguishable. It was not until the Blessed Age that diplomats from Rivain were allowed, however briefly, to visit Parvalin. 
From there, they discovered that Canari females do exist in abundance and are quite easily recognized. The Ravini say that Canari have certain kindness to them, or at least a conspicuous lack of cruelty, although I did not observe the creatures closely enough to evaluate their character. Feed the fish some lead balls and you can win a champion. <laughs> I followed that story quite a bit, Kit. It really fascinated me. Those guys got nailed. What's up, Sarah Bear? Going. History of the Chantry, Chapter 4. The crowds present at the death of Andraste were right to feel despair. It is believed that the prophet's execution angered the maker, and he turned his back on humanity once more, leaving the people of Thetis to suffer in the dark. In these dark times, mankind scrambled for a light, any light. Some found comfort in demonic cults that promised power and riches in return for worship. Others prayed to the old gods for forgiveness, begging the great dragons to return to the world. Still others fell so, so low as to worship the darkspawn, forming vile cults dedicated to the exaltation of evil in its purest form. It is said that the world wept as its people begged for a savior who would not come. Andraste's followers, however, did not abandon her teachings when she died. The cult of Andraste rescued her sacred ashes from the courtyard in Minrathis after her execution, stealing them away to a secret temple. The location of that temple has long been lost, but the ashes of Andraste served as a symbol of the enduring nature of the faith in the Maker, that humanity could earn the Maker's forgiveness despite its grievous insult to him. With time, the cult of Andraste spread and grew, and the chant of light took form. Seeing this chant in the four corners of Thetis, it was said, and the world would gain the Maker's attention at last. As the chant of light spread, the cult of Andraste became known as the Andraste Chantry. Those who converted to the Chantry's beliefs found it their mission to spread Andraste's word. There were many converts, including powerful people in the Imperium and in the city-states of what is now Orlay. Such was the power of the Maker's word that the young King Draken undertook a series of exalted marches meant to unite the city-states and create an empire solely dedicated to the Maker's will. The Orlesian Empire became the seat of the Chantry's power. The Grand Cathedral in Valroyo, the source of the movement that birthed the organized Chantry as we know it today. Draken, by then Emperor Draken I, created the Circle of Magi, the Order of Templars, and the Holy Office of the Divine. <coughs> Many within the Chantry revere him nearly as equal with Andraste herself. The modern Chantry is a thing of faith and beauty, but it is also a house of necessity, protecting Thetis from powerful forces that would do it harm. For the Grey Wardens protect the world from the Blights, the Chantry protects mankind from itself. Most of all, the Chantry works to earn the Maker's forgiveness so that one day he will return and transform the world into the paradise it was always meant to be. From Tales of the Destruction of Thetis by Brother Genitivi. The lore in this game is so rich and wonderful, and I love it immensely. I love that there is so much deep lore for areas you never even go to. All right, like things you never even see in the game and we learn about all of it. It really contributes to an amazing world building. Big fan. It's in this barrel, nothing. I love you reading the codex in games like these. I'm seeing so much more of the lore. I'm glad you enjoy it. Mysterious door. The door opens a crack in response to your knock. There is a light breeze like a change in pressure. Present the small painted box. A large shadow nods. A pouch of coins appears in exchange. The door closes. You delivered a small painted box to the friends of Red Jenny, whoever they are. And then a child laughed. That's weird. I don't like that. All right, house of chests. Yes. All right. And there ain't nothing good in any of them. The gear diversity in this game is lacking, but. 
that it? Just, just some random chests in a house? And a nice little ladder I can climb? Dude, that, that kid laughing in there is creepy. Creeping me out. Nod Noble Tavern. <clears throat> Politics of Ferelden. To our neighbors, Ferelden seems utterly chaotic, you think? Unlike other monarchies, power does not descend from our throne. Rather, it rises from the support of the Freeholders. <clears throat> Each Freehold chooses the Ban or Arl to whom it pays allegiance. Typically, this choice is based on proximity of the Freehold to the Lord's Castle, as it's worthless to pay for the upkeep of soldiers who will arrive at your land too late to defend it. For the most part, each generation of Freeholders casts its lot with the same ban as their fathers did, but things can and do change. No formal oaths are sworn, and it is not unheard of, especially in the prickly central Benorn, for bands to court freeholders away from their neighbors, a practice which inevitably begets feuds that last for ages. Terrans arose from amongst the bands, war leaders who, in antiquity, had grown powerful enough to move other bands to swear fealty to them. There were many Terrans in the days before King Callan had, but he succeeded in whittling them down to only two. Warren in the south, High Ever in the north. These Terrans still hold the oaths of the bands and Arles who they call upon in the event of war or disaster, and similarly, the Terrans still hold responsibility for defending those sworn to them. The Arles were established by the Terrans, given command of strategic fortresses that could not be overseen by the Terrans themselves. Unlike the Terrans, the Arles have no bands sworn to them, and are simply somewhat more prestigious bands. The king is, in essence, the most powerful of the Terrans. Although Denerim was originally the Tenera of the King, it has since been reduced to an Arling, as the King's domain is now all of Ferelden, but even the King's power must come from the bands. Nowhere is this more evident than during the Landsmeet, an annual council for which all the nobles of Ferelden gather, held for almost 3,000 years except odd interruptions during blights and invasions. The sight of a king asking for and working to win the support of lesser men is a source of constant wonder to foreign ambassadors. Look at what that woman's wearing. Is she drunk, or does she just have bad taste? Liliana! Really? That's what- Really? Willing to give everything the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you're gonna- <coughs> You're gonna give that chick shit for what she's wearing? Come on. Navara. The fourth time I attempted to cross the border into Navarra from Orlay and was turned back by Chevaliers, I decided to take the more roundabout path. A ship back to Ferelden and then another to Navarra. The outcome was more than worth the trouble. The whole country is filled with artistry, from the statues of heroes that litter the streets and even the meanest villages, to the glittering Golden College of Magi in Cumberland. Perhaps nowhere is more astonishing than the vast necropolis outside Navarra City. Unlike most other followers of Andraste, the Navarans do not burn their dead. Instead, they carefully preserve the bodies and seal them in elaborate tombs. Some of the wealthiest Navarans begin construction of their own tombs while quite young, and these become incredible palaces, complete with gardens, bathhouses, and ballrooms. Utterly silent, kept only for the dead. That would be really creepy to walk in on. Waitress, what's up? Busy day today. Yeah? All the news is troubling these days. When will the war end? Bartender! Sophie's guard. My shift's nearly over. Thank God, Draste. Oh, shit. Look at that. A two two handed axes chilling in there? Give one of those to, to old Sten. 
I like how you can hear people talking. There's like no patrons in here. Uh, let's go in here. Oh, what's up, guys? Uh, how's it going? I'm a Crimson Ore. Which way you look it or we'll rip your damned eyes out and piss in your skull. Another round for me, Ben. Next, drink to battle and victory. G cool. Now we drink more. Okay. Huh. I suppose you want to drink now, do you? No. Next, drink to battle and victory. Okay. Make us blessings upon you, Warden. Thank you. Notices of death. Warden, it is always a sad duty to report the deaths of those who have died in the service of the guild. Today, this duty falls to you, should you accept it. With this letter, you will find the names of four women recently widowed and letters giving condolences for the loss of their husbands. All four men were killed doing the work of the irregulars, and we mourn the deaths of all who die in service to our ideals. Please handle this task with the discretion and care that I am confident you possess in spades. You must deliver these notes to the widows Irenia in Redcliffe, Larana near Lake Callanhad, and Sarah and Tania in Denerim. Many thanks for this difficult task. I can do that. Restocking the guild. My good people are facing work coming in from two fronts and everyone must contribute. The irregulars are prepared to pay any man or woman who comes forth with a gift of 20 health poultices. No questions asked. If we work together, we can stock the irregulars for war. Uh, I need those. <coughs> Blackstone letter of condolence. My dear lady, it is with great regret that I must inform you of the death of your husband. He died as he lived with the greatest honor. Completing a task of vital importance to the guild. Rest assured that we will take vengeance on those responsible for his death. Please accept my condolences for your loss. Railner Hawkwind. This letter is marked with the seal of the Blackstone Irregulars. Yeah, 20 health poultices? No, you can kiss my ass. Absolutely not. More story time. I love this. The Legend of Callanhad, Chapter 3. <coughs> Callanhad's legend tells that Lady Shayna harbored a love for her king that went beyond friendship. A love that she had kept secret out of her sense of duty and honor. When offered a love potion by a witch in disguise, a witch who would later turn out to be the vengeance-seeking sister of Arl Simeon, Lady Shayna gave in to temptation. She used the potion on Callanhad. The Queen Marin discovered the two of them together at night and, brokenhearted, fled Denerim to return to her father. She told Myrden everything, and he angrily threatened to revoke his support of Callanhad and begin anew the civil war. It is said that Lady Shayna felt remorseful at her manipulation of her best friend's heart and confessed her use of forbidden magic to the court. Although her life was forfeit, Callanhad forgave Lady Shayna for what she had done and refused to have her executed. Mirrodin furiously roused the other Arls against Callanhad and Lady Shayna, and it was not long before Ferelden stood on the brink of civil war once again. Against Callanhad's orders, Lady Shayna went alone to Mirren and pled for peace, and pled her case, only to be found out by Mirrodin and slain. Angered but also saddened, Callanhad challenged Mirrodin to an honor duel, a fight neither of them wanted but both knew was necessary, and Mirrodin was slain. The death of the king's greatest ally, an important Arl, was too much for the young kingdom to bear. The other Arls would not back down in their claims against Callanhad. The threat of civil war rose once again. Callanhad went to his wife one last time then, although none knew what he said to her, and then he simply vanished. He left with Marin and pro a proclaimed a proclamation abdicating his throne in favor of his son, of the son his queen carried in her belly who eventually ascended to the throne as King Waylon I, the king credited with establishing the Terran dynasty lasting to this day. Callanhad would never reappear. The legend of Callanhad himself only grew over time, as stories and sightings multiplied, even long after the point when Callanhad could possibly still be alive. He's like Elvis. Some say he disappeared into the Kokori wilds, or went to live with the dwarves, or even became a monk in a reclusive Chantry order. The Chantry named Callanhad one of the anointed in 788 Storm. 
Talon had sword, Nementos was left with Marin and became a symbol of Ferelden kingship over the next century. Rumors of its magical powers grew, and when it was lost in the ambush that killed King Vendrin in 824 Blessed, it was seen as a great blow to the Tyran line. Several false swords have appeared since that time, but never has the true sword resurfaced. From the Legend of Kalanhad by Brother Heron. There's like parts of that story that sounded kind of similar to what um, Morgan's mom was telling us about like her existence. I could just be misremembering that, but like there was, it really seemed like there was some, nothing in this chest, okay. Really seemed like there were some parallels there. Maybe it's just a common type of thing to happen in this world we're in. Can't unlock this door. Insufficient skill. What's going on in here? Ribane. Nowhere in my travels, not in the heart of the Imperium nor the streets of Orzammar, have I felt so much an outsider as in Ribane. The chance of light never truly reached the ears of these people. The years they spent under the thumb of the Canari left most of the country's zealous followers of the Kun. But resistance to that chant to the chant goes deeper than the Canari War. The Ravani refuse to be parted from their seers, wise women who are in fact hedge mages, communicating with spirits and actually allowing themselves to become possessed. Chantry prohibition against such magical practices violates millennia of local tradition. Yes, it's almost as if at times you have to coexist. Soldier's Helm, not interested. Oh, okay. Diamond, a silk carpet, and two gold. I just totally robbed somebody blind. Topaz. All right, make more money. Man, I got all this money, and I don't spend it on anything. Uh, feel free to spell it out phonetically for me, Chris, and I will pronounce it correctly. What can I get you, stranger? Uh, you heard any rumors? The dark spawn have attacked Lothering. I don't think everyone even had fled by the time they came, either. Word has it they swarmed the entire area, making off with prisoners and burning down the buildings. And then they were gone. Just as quick wonder if there's anyone left. I heard some chanters were going to head down south, maybe to try to find some survivors. I'm not holding out hope myself. Anything else you need? I wonder what would happen if we went back to Lothering. I wonder if it's just like a completely deserted area now. And any other rumors? There's news come out of Redcliffe at last. Seems that our Eamon has come down with some deadly sickness, probably the blight, and he may even die. If he does, it probably means no one else can stand up to Tyrn Loghain in the lands meet. Rather fortunate turn for Tyrn, no? Anything else you need? Hmm, it seems that Tyrn Loghain has responded to the ambush when his men near I ever. Group of his best, hunted down the ones who did it, all of them hunters out of Oswin, Van Valdrick's men. I hear Tyrn Logan ordered them all strung up on poles. Then they were left up there to starve, pleading for mercy. I hope that isn't true. That's a grim thing to do to someone. Anything else you need? The dwarves have themselves a new king, I understand. One chosen by a grey warden, too, if you can believe it. Can't a lot of people it. are hoping this means they will help us fight the dark spawn now. Anything else you need? Yeah, wow, that's wild. Can you believe yeah, wow, Grey Warden did that? Really? <coughs> Have you heard the startling news out of the Mage's Tower? The Templars say they were forced to cleanse it. Every mage was slain. Seems with all the chaos, demons were able to take over the tower. A terrible business. I know the mages bring it on themselves, but I still can't help feeling sorry for the bastards. Anything else you need? Mm. It seems a group of Loghain's men were ambushed yesterday near Highover. I don't know who did it, but the men were hit while they were camping for the night. 
A whole lot of them taken by surprise. Their tents were set on fire with arrows, and I hear two dozen died. Nasty business. Anything else you need? Nasty business. I've heard some strange word out of the Brazilian forest that Dalish elves are being called together to form some kind of army. And it's to help us, not attack us. Doesn't that beat all? When I heard that, I thought for sure we were done for. Anything else you need? There's outrage over what Tyrn Logain did to the hunters out of Oswin, letting a man starve, helpless. I think Tyrn Logain meant that to be a lesson, to make everyone think twice about continuing this fight. It's going to do exactly the opposite, you ask me. Anything else you need? Interesting. More trouble in the land, it seems. As panic begins to rise from the dark spawn's approach, there's more and more word of riots. Guarin, Denerim, High Ever. There's trouble everywhere. There are people already fleeing north for the free marches. They say that Ferelden's all but lost. You think that's true? Anything else you need? I don't know, man. The blight sickness brought by the dark spawn is spreading faster than anyone thought. Several sources say that it's even here in Denerim. From what I hear, there's an outbreak in the elven alienage in the city. Others tell me that's not true. Still, it's a frightening thought. Anything else you need? Heard from a dwarf the other day that smoke was rising over Oswin. Revolt, he says. Tian Logain is trying to put it down as we speak, but I understand it's not going well. Anything else you need? I love these conversations with the barkeeps. Like, I, this, it's so cool how many things they have to say. I don't know what to tell you. Nothing I can think of at the moment. Thanks, man. Well, I appreciate all the what info. What can I get you, stranger? <clears throat> Anyone need help? Maybe with something not strictly... Well, I don't, want, I don't know about that. Let me see what you got. Right. I'll show you around. Yeah, give me all of this. Give me all you got here. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. What can I get you, stranger? I guess I could ask him what he needs. I don't have to do it. He glances around for prying eyes and produces a few notes on behalf of interested parties. Rogue quests. Correspondence interruptus. <clears throat> R has a small request. It's always useful to have a big name in your pocket, and there's nothing better than snagging them with their knickers down. If in travels wide someone were to come across notes between illicit lovers, I have certain specialists who can make the most of the texts. Delivered to the bartender, and an investment towards future manipulation will be handsomely paid. Yikes! D requires swift action. I have trouble. A few of my excitable young associates got a little nervous during a couple of delicate handovers. Suffice to say, a little mess needs attention. Life is normally cheap, but if word of this gets out, there will be consequences. My men are under close watch, so I'd be most grateful for someone willing to take care of this. Coin is assured. K requests the following. The troubles of the new blood seem to find me. I've ruffled some feathers with my alternative tactics, and certain people have had me blacklisted by my primary suppliers. So I put this out there to those enterprising friends who want an ally and perhaps a little coin. Fifteen toxin extract samples will be more than enough to ensure I can continue building support. Simple, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not doing any of those. Cool to know that they exist. But, uh, nope. All right. Uh, I did all that. There's this dude over here to talk to. So we'll talk to him and see what he has for us. Actually, I'm going to go talk to the Mage Collective guy because I can get some money for the Letters of Termination. A little something extra for friendship. Sure. Okay. Thanks, man. Okay. Oh my 
god, there's still so much to do. Brother Genie TV's research suggested the village of Haven in the mountains to the west might have some clues as to the location of the urn. I kind of want to do that. Sarah. Oh, wait, now Sarah's got something for me. That was the lady that I said hello to. She was just like, good morning. Hey, what's up? Yes. Oh. Uh. I have a letter for you from the Blackstone Irregulars. All right. Let me take a look. I feared this day would come. See you later. All right, Sergeant Kylon, what do you got for me, dog? We have a we this kid's possessed by a demon. This is demonic. In the jurisdiction of the chantry. Everybody's just letting it happen. No way that kid's not possessed by a demon right now. Foul things are afoot. Or afloat. You here to report another crime? I swear we should just cordon off the entire district. Oh, uh, can I help you, Warden? Uh, how do you know who I am? Your likeness was passed around to the senior guardsmen at the palace. I must say, the sketch didn't do you much justice. Uh, don't worry. Even if I believed the official story of what happened at Ostagar, I'm no fool. If I asked my men to apprehend you, they'd all run and cry big sobby tears in their courtesans' bosoms and leave me all <laughs> alone to be skewered. Don't disturb the peace in the market, and that's well enough for me. Cool, smart man. Is it really that bad? The lower market isn't deemed important by the captain of the guard, even less with Al Howe in charge. So when I finally get the new men I request, I get the delightful surprise of discovering their lords such and such as illegitimate, untrained, moronic whelps. But lords keep sending me more of them. It's decent pay, no expectations, a uniform. So I have a legion of bastards to protect the market from pickpockets, stabbings, and whatnot. And Al Howe's specially picked men are the worst of the lot. How were they worse? With the bastards, I just have to worry about dicing the odd bit of drool or yelling at them too loudly and hurting their poor feelings and then getting chewed out by their noble fathers. But I swear, the Arl's men are more criminal than the miscreants we occasionally arrest. Some of them are the criminals we have to arrest. So if your lifeblood isn't draining in the gutters as we speak, don't bother reporting it. Damn, that sounds awful. <laughs> this guy this guy means business he's got a bunch of it, this reminds me of when i was in high school i worked at a car wash over the summers and like the guy who owned the car wash was like serious business he like he, he really cared about his business he took it seriously the guy was passionate about car washes and the people that he hired were just awful it was like me and one of my friends worked there and we were like really reliable and we did a good job and everybody else was just a bunch of people that thought they were going to make quick money at the car wash and it was like watching him deal with that was horrific such a terrible space to be in when you're like trying to lead people who are in a space voluntarily and they're just not willing to work with you or don't understand the expectations or you don't have the power to enforce expectations which is usually a big problem in situations like this like if he actually tried to implement some sort of reinforcement mechanisms and disciplinary action he may not actually have the institutional power to do that and that undercuts a lot of stuff a lot of people bitch about people in these types of positions like the the underlings of his being just you know worthless and not doing their job and not respecting boundaries and stuff but they also are often surrounded by it may even be people who are not willing to implement reinforcement mechanisms 
stuff that would actually curb their behavior because we god forbid we make these people uncomfortable in some way or actually show them rules like you can't be a person who says everybody should just be allowed to do what they want and complain when everybody just does whatever they want i'm not saying that's this guy it's just that's a bit of a tangent anyway you need any help to what you're serious i mean yes yes i could use help i've got a pretty popular uh, establishment that's crawling with mercenaries if i send my boys in someone might get make a forbid hurt and i'll have to explain to their noble fathers that being a guard is actually dangerous what do you need me to do the name of the whorehouse is the pearl beat down any mercenaries that are out of line and send them a message i said beat down not kill let me make that really clear not on fire or exploded or make a nose whatever type of grisly death you can dream up sorry used to giving orders to my boys just leave them breathing and I'll be happy. Can do. Thank you, Warden. Happy hunting. We will henceforth refer to the Pearl as a brothel and the folks who work there as sex workers because it's 2022, not This area is big. We got a lot to do. Master Ignacio. Another visitor, the Maestro. Enjoy browsing my wares. What do you got? My cousin and I have trade connections all along the seaways. We have furniture, silks, carvings, and much more. Cesar handles the trade stock. I handle other affairs. Like what? Business deals, uh, meetings. Cesar makes it so I am free of the day-to-day -day concerns of our store. All right. Uh, you aren't from Ferelden, are you? There's really no reason for me to say that. Do you need any help? Um, no, not yet. Perhaps one day. No, I am not. I am a trader at heart. My home is the road, but I was born past the waking sea in Antiva. It has been many, many years since I have seen her, but the road oh, is a better mistress than my home city ever was. What do you mean? On the docks of Rialto, life is cheap. As cheap as the dockside ale and the soiled horse. You can live a longer life out here. And a wise man can make a comfortable fortune in time. With the blight, Ferelden's not exactly a safe place to be either. Straightforward, predictable danger is refreshing to me. Any moment in Rialto, the streets can run red and often do. I'd take Dark Spawn any day. At least you can see them coming. Luck be to you, Warden. Fair enough. It's kind of interesting to me that this guy has orange text above his head. Cesar! If you have coin, welcome to our shop. If not, move along. Too many refugees blocking customers. Uh, you know anything special about Denner? Better trade cities to the north, but plenty good trade here. Now with war and blight, Business is bad. Sure it is. What do you got oh, for yes. sale? Uh, poison recipe. Wow. All right. Pro dagger, saw sword. They actually got some decent stuff. All right. Hmm. Be careful with that package, you lazy slut. It's worth more than you'll make in ten years. I hate that.
All right. Well. <clears throat> Must be fun to pick on the little folks. Good day. The market is busy, is it not? Come, rest here. I have the finest selection of flowers and Orlesian scented oils in all of Denerim. For a lady friend, perhaps? Roses can open any woman's heart, you know. Um, where are you from? I am from Orlais. You've heard of us, no? This Denerim is a fine city, but I miss my Varroyo. She's quite beautiful this time of year. Why'd you leave? Orlais has many, many good things. But it is sometimes not so good to be... common. My brother had trouble with a chevalier and we departed shortly after. What's that? You know so little of Orlais here. The chevaliers are knights of the highest order. They are the most skilled in the world. Their discipline, formidable. For their service, they're allowed privileges. They can do whatever they want to the lesser born. Man. What is this, Orzammar 2.0? Orzammar above the ground? Why? With power becomes from Jesus. Why do people put up with them? Because there is little choice. There are so many wonderful things about Orlais, but Ferelden has something precious. Here, a man or a woman is born free and lives free. I do not understand it, but the nobles here are not so high, and none of us are quite so low. As much <clears throat> as I miss my Varroyo, I love where I am. I mean, relativity is plays a part here, right? So if it's better than Orlais, I'm not going to take that away from her, but it's not... Uh, you're talking to a guy that wasn't exactly uh, treated as fine, despite being less than. But she, she means well, so again, this is one of those things where, like, I'm not going to beat the shit out of her for this. She gets to have her experience. Like, yeah, I could be, yes, my people are so free, locked in their alienages. I don't expect her to know that. I'm not going to be an asshole about it. She certainly missed the mark, but she wasn't take, making a personal attack on me. I Like, I really... You know, this game has presented a lot of opportunities where I think, like, in general, if people don't think, you would react very strongly to, like, I'm an elf, how dare you say that? As if she's making a personal attack. People very rarely make direct personal attacks. A lot of us would do well to, like, take a step back and ask ourselves, is this person actually taking a shot at me? Or is this more of a indication of where they are developmentally in their understanding of my context or the environment we're in? More often than not, it's the latter. And if you can get into that space, one, your blood's not going to boil so much. And two, you can actually have meaningful dialogue with a lot of people. It's very rarely as personal as we make it out to be. Mostly because we all think we're the main character of our... We're the main character of our story, but not everybody else's story. What sort of trouble did you get in? A chevalier took an interest in me. It was his right, but oh. it was unwelcome. Yikes. Incensed. My brother hit him over the head with a pot. Such a thing is almost treason. We left that very night and came here. I can't say I blame you. Why on earth would I say that those beasts are allowed to rape women that and more some reveal them for their skill and their high service but others tread lightly oh. as lightly as the mouse in the cat's den if you will excuse me i i feel a touch lightheaded understandable i'm sure that she's just internally reliving her trauma right now as we're having this conversation that is the power of when you have institutional weight behind you and your title, that's why people in those positions do bad things. Because you can. There is no system of reinforcement that punishes that behavior. In fact, you are encouraged to do whatever you want. This is why boundaries is so important, my friends. Because when people don't have to have them, Humans are a lot like gas, where they will expand to whatever the limitations are around them. So boundaries, in a lot of ways, keep people in check. There is utility to boundaries, to decorum, to respect for personal space and autonomy. 
right? We can over curate that for people. But ultimately, when you allow people to roam freely and do as they please, they are more able to act on impulse and they will likely expand into that space unless they have some sort of governing force, whether it be some kind of doctrine or values that they've learned to use that power responsibly. But you always have to have people in positions of power in check. When you allow them to just move around unbounded, they're going to do it because they haven't learned that it's a problem to do it. You're set up to very subjective mechanisms of reinforcement. Like, perhaps that guard gets uncomfortable when she's uncomfortable by his advances. But if she doesn't have that, if he doesn't have that, which it sounds like was the case for her, then she's doomed because she has no power. And if she tries to take that to somebody, they're going to say, well, that's just what they're allowed to do. Too bad. And that's really scary. That instills an immense sense of chronic stress and anxiety and trauma for folks. People in positions of power need to have limitations. They need to be kept in check. Oh, terrible. Yeah, she'd like to be arrested for admitting she resisted. Exactly. Well, YouTube, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me and make it over to Denerim. We did not go underground, which feels so good. As always, thank you so much for your support. If you made it this far through the video, please, please, please consider hitting like on the video and leaving a comment. Also, subscribe to the channel if you don't subscribe to it already. I would greatly appreciate that. If you're watching my videos, you can turn off notifications. If that's the reason you're not subscribed to the channel, you can turn them off. Or you can have them on so that way you know when a new video is posted but regardless thank you so much again follow the links down in the description and i will very much look forward to catching you in part 24.